St. Alphonsus, Those Called to the Religious State Chapter 6, Continued Consideration 13 The Zeal Which Religious Should Have for Their Souls He who is called to the congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer will never be a true follower of Jesus Christ and will never become a saint if he fulfills not the end of his vocation and has not the spirit of the Institute which is the salvation of souls and of those souls who are the most destitute of spiritual succor, such as the poor people in the country. This was truly the end for which our Redeemer came down from heaven, who protests, The Spirit of the Lord hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Luke 4.18 He sought no other proof of Peter's love for him but this, that he should procure the salvation of souls. Simon, son of John, Lovest thou me? Feed my lambs. John 21.17 He did not oppose upon him, says St. John Chrysostom, penance, prayers, or other things, but only that he should endeavor to save his lambs. Christ said not to him, Throw your money away, practice fasting, fatigue your body with hard work, but he said, Feed my lambs and he declares that he would look upon every benefit conferred on the least of our neighbors as conferred on himself. Amen, I say to you, as long as you do it to one of these, my least brethren, you did it to me. Matthew twenty-five forty. Every religious should, therefore, with the utmost care, entertain within himself this zeal and the spirit of helping souls. To this end, everyone should direct his studies, and when he shall afterwards have been assigned to his work by his superiors, he should give it to all his thoughts and his whole attention. He could not call himself a true member of this congregation, who, through the desire of attending only to himself and of leading a retired and solitary life, would not accept with all affection such an employment when imposed on him by obedience. What greater glory can a man have than to be, as St. Paul says, a cooperator with God in this great work of the salvation of souls? He who loves the Lord ardently is not content to be alone in loving him. He would draw all to his love, saying with David, O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us extol his name together. Psalms 33, 4. Hence, St. Augustine exhorts all those who love God if you love God, draw all men to his love. A good ground to hope for his salvation has he who, with true zeal, labors for the salvation of souls. Have you saved a soul? Says St. Augustine. Then you have predestinated your own. The Holy Ghost promises us, When thou shalt pour out thy soul to the hungry, when thou shalt have labored for the welfare of a poor man, and shalt satisfy the afflicted soul, and by thy labor shalt have filled him with divine grace. The Lord will give thee rest continually, and will fill thy soul with brightness. The Lord will fill thee with light and peace. Isaiah 58, 10 and 11. In this, namely, in procuring the salvation of others, St. Paul placed his hope of eternal salvation. When he said to his disciples of Thessalonica, For what is our hope or joy or crown of glory? Are not you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? 1 Thessalonians 2.19 Prayer O my Lord Jesus Christ, how can I thank thee enough, since thou hast called me to the same work that thou didst thyself on earth, namely to go with my poor exertions, and help souls to their salvation. How have I deserved this honor and this reward, after having offended thee so grievously, and been the cause to others also of offending thee? Yes, O my Lord, thou callest me to help thee in this great undertaking. I will serve thee with all my strength. Behold, I offer thee all my labor, and even my blood in order to obey thee, nor do I by this aspire to satisfy my own inclination or to gain applause and esteem from men. I desire nothing but to see thee loved by all. 
as thou deservest. I prize my happy lot, and call myself fortunate that thou hast chosen me for this great work, in which I protest that I will renounce all praises of men and all self-satisfaction, and will only seek thy glory. To thee be all the honor and satisfaction, and to me only the discomforts, the blame, and the reproaches. Accept, O Lord, this offering, which I, a miserable sinner who wishes to love thee and to see thee loved by others, make of myself to thee, and give me strength to execute it. Most Holy Mary, my advocate, who lovest souls so much, help me. Amen. Consideration 14. The Necessity of Having Meekness and Humility Our most lovely Redeemer Jesus willed to be called a lamb for this very reason that he might show us how meek and humble he was himself. These were the virtues which he principally wished his followers should learn from him. Learn from me, because I am meek and humble of heart. Matthew eleven twenty nine. And these virtues he principally requires from religious, who profess to imitate his most holy life. He who lives as a solitary in a desert has not so much need of these virtues. But for him who lives in a community, it is impossible not to meet now and then with a reprimand from his superiors or something disagreeable from his companions. In such cases, a religious who loves not meekness will commit a thousand faults every day and live an unquiet life. He must be all sweetness with everybody, with strangers, with companions, and also with inferiors, if he should ever become superior. And if he is an inferior, he must consider that one act of meekness and bearing contempt and reproach is of greater value to him than a thousand fasts and a thousand disciplines. St. Francis said that many make their perfection consist in exterior mortifications, and after all, are not able to bear one injurious word, not understanding, he added, how much greater gain is made by patiently bearing injuries. How many persons, as St. Bernard remarks, are all sweetness when nothing is said or done contrary to their inclination? but show their want of meekness when anything crosses them. And if one should ever be superior, let him believe that one reprimand made with meekness will profit his subjects more than a thousand made with severity. The meek are useful to themselves and to others, as St. John Chrysostom teaches. In a word, as the same saint said, the greatest sign of a virtuous soul is to see it meek on occasions of contradiction. A meek heart is the pleasure of the heart of God. That which is agreeable to him is faith and meekness. Ecclesiasticus 134. It would be well for a religious to represent to himself in his meditations all the contrarieties that may happen to him, and thus arm himself against them. And then, when the occasion happens, he should do violence to himself that he may not be excited and break out in impatience. Therefore, he should refrain from speaking when his mind is disturbed till he is certain that he has become calm again, but to bear injuries quietly. It is above all necessary to have a great fund of humility. He who is truly humble is not only unmoved when he sees himself despised, but is even pleased and rejoices at it in spirit, however the flesh may resent it. For he sees himself treated as he deserves and made conformable to Jesus Christ, who, worthy as he was of every honor, chose for the love of us to be satiated with contempt and injuries. Brother Juniper, a disciple of St. Francis, when an injury was done to him, held up his cowl, as if he expected to receive pearls falling from heaven. The saints have been more desirous of injuries than worldlings are covetous of applause and honor. And of what use is a religious who does not know how to bear contempt for God's sake? He's always proud and only humble in name and a hypocrite whom divine grace will repulse. As the Holy Ghost says, God resisteth the proud, but to the humble he giveth grace. 
1 Peter 5.5 5. Prayer O my most humble Jesus, who for the love of me didst humble thyself and become obedient unto the death of the cross, how have I the courage to appear before thee and call myself thy follower? For I see myself to be such a sinner and so proud that I cannot bear a single injury without resenting it. Whence can come such pride in me, who for my sins have so many times deserved to be cast forever into hell with the devils? All my despised Jesus, help me and make me conformable to thee. I will change my life. Thou for love of me hast borne so much contempt. I for love of thee will bear every injury. Thou, O my Redeemer, hast rendered contempt too honorable and desirable. Hence thou hast embraced it with so much love during thy own life. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 6.14 O my most humble Mistress Mary, Mother of God, Thou who wast in all, and especially in suffering, the most conformed to thy Son, obtain for me the grace to bear in peace all injuries which henceforward shall be offered to me. Amen. Consideration 15. How much religious should confide in the patronage of Mary? If it is true, and most true it is, that according to the sayings of St. Peter Damien, the Divine Mother, the Most Holy Mother, loves all men with such an affection that after God there is not, nor can there be, anyone who surpasses or equals her in her love. She loves us with an invincible love. How much must we think this great queen loves religious who have consecrated their liberty, their life, and their all to the love of Jesus Christ? She sees well enough that the life of such as these is more conformable to her own life and to that of her divine Son. She sees them often occupied in praising her and continually attentive to honor her by their novenas, visits, rosaries, fasts, etc. She beholds them often at her feet, intent on invoking her aid, asking graces of her, and graces all conform to her holy desires, i.e. the grace of perseverance in the divine service, of strength in their temptations, of detachment from this world, and of love towards God. Ah, uh, how can we doubt that she employs all her power and her mercy for the benefit of religious, and especially of those who belong to this holy congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer, in which, as it is well known, we make special profession of honoring the Virgin Mother by visits, by fasting on Saturdays, by special mortifications during her novenas, etc., and by everything promoting devotion to her by sermons and novenas in her honor. She, the great mistress, is grateful. I love those who love me. Proverbs 8.17 Yes, she is so grateful that as St. Andrew of Crete says, to him who does her the least service, she is accustomed to return great favors. She promises liberally those who love her and who promote her honor among others to deliver them from sin. Those that work by me shall not sin. She also promises to them paradise. Those that explain me shall have life everlasting. For which reason we especially should thank God for having called us to this congregation, in which by the usages of the community and the example of our companions we are often reminded and in some way constrained to have recourse to Mary and continually to honor this our most loving mother, who is called and is the joy, the hope, the life, and the salvation of those who invoke and honor her. Prayer My most beloved, most lovely, and most loving Queen, I always thank my Lord in Thee, who has not only drawn me out of the world, but also called me to live in this congregation, where a special devotion to Thee is practiced. 
Accept of me, then, my mother, to serve thee. Among so many of thy beloved sons, do not scorn to let me serve thee also, miserable though I am. Thou, after God, shalt be always my hope and my love, in all my wants, and in all my tribulations and temptations. I will always have recourse to thee. Thou shalt be my refuge, my consolation. I am unwilling that any but God and thou shouldst comfort me in my combats, in the sadness and the tediousness of this life. For thy service I renounce all the kingdoms of the whole world. My kingdom on this earth shall be to serve, bless, and love thee, O my most lovely mistress, whom to serve is to reign. Thou art the mother of perseverance, obtain for me to be faithful to thee until death. By so doing, I hope and firmly hope, one day to come where thou reignest, to praise and bless thee forever, to depart no more from thy holy feet. Jesus and Mary, I protest with your loving servant, Alphonsus Rodriguez, my most sweet loves, let me suffer for you, let me die for you, let me be all yours, and not all my own. Amen. <laughs> 